you cannot play any instrument at any time in your house or you can be fined £5,000 and we can force entry to your house and confiscate all of your instruments. My whole livelihood, basically. I'm not doing anything appallingly wrong. They came for the buskers, they came for the live music venues, and now they're coming for you in your own homes. Can you imagine being told that you could not practice your instruments in your home or you'll be fined £5,000 and have those instruments and any sound devices taken away from you? That is the situation for musician Fiona Fay, and it makes me very angry. And it should make you angry too, because you could be next. I know I normally bring fun stuff to this channel, but this is a very serious situation. So I sat down with Fiona on a video call, and she explained her story to me and how we can help her, and in turn, ourselves. So here is that video call. Hello, Fiona. Thank you for joining me today. Can you tell us your story in case people don't know what's happened to you and why we're chatting today? Yeah, so I moved into a new flat uh, July 2022, July just gone. And uh, it was okay for the first month. Downstairs was a, new, a music teacher. So I thought, oh, great, this is good. We're going to have loads in common. Um, but after about a month, I started to get noise complaints. So I stopped playing the piano in the house because I thought, fair enough, the piano is loud. I got myself a keyboard. Um, I got more complaints about, you know, the clarinet, so I stopped playing the clarinet. I, I, um, I moved into the room that's furthest away from where they were. The room was carpeted. I padded it out in every way I could and uh, still got complaints. Started getting complaints about the low whistle, which is about 75 to 85 decibels. So for anyone that doesn't know, it's about the volume of a, an old Hoover. Um, and yeah, it was at this point I started to think, mm, this is getting a bit controlling because I was practicing. I never started. The earliest I ever started was 10.30 and usually I waited till 11. And I was usually done by 2.33 because I teach piano after school. Uh, the rhetoric from downstairs was that it's a house, not a studio. You shouldn't be practicing here. Um, and it didn't matter how, you know, I tried to say to them, most musicians don't have a studio. Most musicians practice from home. And I play low whistle and acoustic guitar and singing. I know loads of brass players that are practicing from home, drummers that are practicing from home. Some of them live in Victorian houses that are nowhere near as well insulated. I'm not doing anything appallingly wrong here, but it just it didn't work. And they got more and more aggressive, sort of pounding on the door whenever I'd practice. No. Yeah. So they, they reported you to the local council and you got an official complaint. And I remember when I put it in a video previous to this uh, in some sort of announcement, I think you you were having like a potential £5,000 fine and all your gear taken away. Is that Was that true? That was the threat. So after they came round to talk to me, they told me that any noise that was audible from my neighbour's house could be classified as a nuisance. Any noise at all that was audible. Um, I was, the next two weeks they were monitoring me and I said, I was not that worried because I thought, well, surely not, I'm a flute player. I mean, I live in Lewisham. <laughs> right. Lewisham's not the calmest of places to be. Um, so I thought they're not really gonna be bothering themselves about a daytime flute player. Was I wrong? <laughs> My God. Um, yeah, so two weeks later, even though I'd only been home for two days, I'd been out rehearsing every other day, I'd only been home for two days, and not even all day, they came and served me an abatement notice. And that abatement notice that they served me said, you cannot play any instrument at any time in your house, or you can be fined £5,000 and we can force entry to your house and confiscate all of your instruments, along with anything we perceive to be kind of a noise-making thing, including speakers, computers, anything. I'm sorry that I have a kind of smile on my face, but the whole thing seems so ridiculous and you seem quite lighthearted about it that I, I, I feel like I'm hearing a, a part of a joke rather than an actual lifetime story. And for the viewers that are watching this right now, I hope you are absolutely disgusted with what you're hearing. And yeah, we're kind of making light of it, but imagine if um, all the gear that we talk on my channel, imagine if you couldn't even pick up an electric guitar and strum that without plugging it in. That just, it just seems absolutely preposterous. When it happened, I bawled for the rest of the day. And then I got very angry 
and uh, I put a shout out on my socials and someone got back immediately saying, call my dad, he's a solicitor. I spent, uh, I, I called him, he was lovely, he's a brand player, so very much understood. Um, and he spent, yeah, he spent the next morning going through everything with me and saying, yep, this is appalling. But then he called me the following day and said, unfortunately, with the law the way it is, the burden of proof is on you if you want to fight this. Um, it's going to be very expensive and it could take a long time. And in the meantime, it, the notice won't be suspended. So you cannot practice. And he said, if I were you, I would just get out of there. So I hung up the phone and I did another ball for a, about an hour. And then I just started flinging things into boxes and suitcases and I just got out. Let's ask a stupid question, right? How important is it to you and your lifestyle that you practice your instrument? Hmm. <laughs> um, I don't always remember to eat at home, but practicing, that's very much part of my life. I mean, it's just, I, I don't know what other people do in their homes. <laughs> Whatever it is that you're working on or that's the most important thing in your life or that's your way of spending your free time, like, it's just all of it, isn't it? Like, I, it's, it's my enjoyment. It's essential that I can, you know, I record, um, you know, I'm not, I, I pause for the thing. Yeah, I'm I'm home recording albums. I'm practicing stuff that needs to be learned for gigs and for recordings. I'm you know, and if I want to relax, I might want to just learn something for fun. Or it's it's my whole life. You play in at least two outfits, and that's something sleeps and the medieval babes, right? And my solo project is yeah. And your solo project, sorry. Um, now I don't. How do I put this politely? The music you play is quite polite and pleasant to listen to. And I'm saying this with a load of electric guitars behind me. Um, yeah, uh, what I'm trying to say is it's not as if you're playing death metal until midnight at night. Well, exactly. And if they come for me, they're coming for you. <laughs> I play a low whistle. Like that was the thing. Um, that was the thing that was really annoying the neighbors. A low whistle is so quiet. And I can't believe with all the brass and drum drummers that I know, I'm the one that got served. It's mental. I'd like to know what we can do to help, uh, not just you, but the future of music in the UK and beyond. Ooh, well, I mean, sign the petition for a start and share it, obviously. Um, we're at 86, 87 at the moment. When it gets to 100, I'm going to take it to Parliament. That's how many it needs. Just help me shout about it. I think for now, embarrassing councils who do it is a very good first step. Is is there an arts program in Lewisham? Do they do they care about the arts? Yes, there is. They won. Um, they won Borough of Culture, London Borough of Culture, in twenty twenty two. So yes, <laughs> there is. <laughs> oh, that's that's painful. That hurts so bad. I know. I know. It's mental. Well, I, I always try and find something positive out of something negative, or at least you know turn something around for a silver lining. And if this this might offend you, but. I think every musician needs something to make them stand out from the crowd because thankfully there is so much music in the world. Maybe, Fiona, this is the thing that makes people say, hey, not only is she fighting the good fight, she also plays pretty decent music as well. So maybe it turns out to be something positive for you in the end. Yeah, well, I've been on a lot of radio and in a lot of newspapers recently. And weirdly enough, my Spotify and social media listenership has just had a spike over the past weeks, so. I have to ask the question, did you make this up? <laughs> it's, it's a great publicity stunt, no, no. Fiona, what's your plans for the future and what do you want to say to the people watching this video? Well, I need to get a place again so I can start, start finishing the album I already started with Something Sleeps. Um, I also had a load of my solo stuff in the mix that half finished so that's the that's the next thing um what i want to say to everyone watching this well i'm sure everybody already knows it's just even if even if you don't like music which is not anybody here but even if you don't like it um music is just so so important it has you know playing it to young children regularly or getting young children to play music it has a, a massive impact on their balance their coordination their memory um, for adults, it's been shown to reduce anxiety and depression, um, singing in groups, massive impact on that. 
um, it has it has huge effects on people suffering with dementia. It, it's it's preventative. It's it's amazing. So even if you actually don't enjoy it at all, it's just basically medicine. Yeah, and who who are they to deny someone their medicine? So again. The word ridiculous comes back to mind, and I think we'll uh, we'll stay there. So, Fiona, thank you so much for your time. Again, I wish you the best of luck, and I hope that um, this, this this sensible thing happens, and all this gets not just blown away, but actually makes an impact on the future that it doesn't happen again or for a very long time, and then people are more educated to fight it once again. So, thank you, and um, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. It is possibly the most important thing you could have done with your time. In the video description, there's a link to Fiona's petition. I urge you to go and sign that. There's also a link to Fiona's music and all her projects. Go and check those out. There's one more link that I need you to watch, and that is the link to the conversation that Fiona has with the Lewisham Council. It is, in a word, ridiculous, but also embarrassing for the council. So. I urge you to do all that and reach out to anybody who's important. If you're a solicitor, if you have a brother or a cousin or a sister or a mother who is a solicitor, please get them to contact Fiona. I'll make sure that her contact details are in the video description below this video. Thank you for watching and uh, keep music alive.